The model penal code lists the predicate felonies that can justify giving the jury a felony murder instruction. Many of the jurisdictions that retain the felony murder rule leave it to the courts instead to decide whether the felony that caused death counts as inherently dangerous for felony murder purposes. California is one such jurisdiction. And People v. Phillips gives us an idea of how the so-called abstract approach to determining inherent dangerousness is supposed to go. The abstract approach, as applied in Phillips, looks at the statutory definition of the predicate felony and asks whether it is possible for it to be committed in a non-dangerous way. If it can, then it's not inherently dangerous. This is determined by the court as a matter of law. In making its determination, the court ignores facts and circumstances of the particular case before it. That's why it's called abstract. The predicate felony alleged in Phillips was grand theft by deception. The court determined that, under the abstract approach, this is not an inherently dangerous felony. Grand theft by deception can be committed without endangering life. The court deliberately abstracts away from the fact that Phillips had persuaded the parents of the deceased to forgo possibly life-saving medical treatment for the cancer of the eye. The prosecution tried to reframe the predicate felony as grand theft medical fraud, which is not so easy to commit safely. The Phillips court rejected the argument. A contrasting approach to the question, is this an inherently dangerous predicate felony, can be found in a case decided here in Georgia, Hines v. State. Hines accidentally shot a turkey hunting companion. The victim died and Hines was convicted of murder under a felony murder instruction. The predicate was possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. The edited version of our case does not mention the fact that Hines's prior felony was a DUI, driving under the influence of alcohol. Under the abstract approach, as in Phillips, mere possession of a firearm, even by a convicted felon, would likely not count as inherently dangerous. But the state of Georgia takes a different approach. In Georgia, a felony is inherently dangerous when it is dangerous per se. This is the abstract approach, essentially. Or, by its circumstances, creates a foreseeable risk of death. The Heinz court held that the defendant's firing his shotgun in the circumstances created a foreseeable risk of death. Therefore, his possession of the firearm as a felon was an inherently dangerous felony. The Georgia approach essentially combines the abstract and the facts and circumstances approaches. If the predicate felony is dangerous either way, a felony murder instruction goes to the jury. To affirm Heinz's conviction, the court had to address a precedent case, Ford versus State. In that case, a convicted felon's firearm discharged while he was cleaning it, fatally injuring a downstairs neighbor. The defendant's conviction under a felony murder instruction was reversed. The court distinguished Ford on the ground that, in Ford, no evidence showed the defendant knew there was an apartment below him or that the victim was present, whereas Hines knew others were in the vicinity. Query whether Hines would have been convictable of any crime had he not had that felony DUI on his record. Another query. What result in Cook's tame fowl case under Hines? 
it seems that the Hines approach would approve a felony murder instruction if there were evidence that the defendant knew others were in the area.